This is the BMW 320D. It's been our executive car of the year for two years now, but what's it like to live with? We've had a year and 23,000 miles to find out. Ours is a sport model, so the, the base price is just a shade under £30,000, but we've added also a few key extras. This smart red paint is an extra, obviously, as are these 18-inch alloy wheels. Inside this leather upholstery is an extra, but we've, um, it's actually worn very well over its year with us. This um, silver trim is also an extra, and we've also spent extra on the fancier sat-nav system. To be honest with you, you can forget about some of the cosmetic options. The two best options in this car by far are the two that make it drive better. One you can't see, which is the dynamic drive suspension option, which makes the car ride and handle a lot better. And believe you me, I've driven some standard 3 Series and the difference is markable. The other brilliant option, though, is this 8-speed automatic gearbox. Unlike most automatics, it doesn't have any penalties on fuel economy and CO2 either. And in fact, the CO2 on the automatic is actually lower, so if you do go for the auto, you'll pay less in company car tax. The real joy of the 3 Series though, and I, even after a year, I still love driving it. This is the sharpest, most comfortable car in its class to drive by a mile. And that really applies whether you're pootling around town, driving on the motorway, or you know, hammering down a B road. And really, it's fantastic at all, in all three scenarios. But perhaps even better than driving it are the numbers I've been getting. I mean, really, this car is extraordinarily economical. I've really tried hard, and believe me, I've tried quite hard sometimes, to actually get it below 50 mpg. But day in, day out, this car just seems to keep returning 50 mpg. And that really is extraordinary. We've got cars in the Watt Car office, such as the one litre Ford Focus, which can't even get close to that. And here, this is a car with nearly 200 horsepower, an automatic gearbox, you know, it's superb, superbly refined, and really it's getting the, the worst I can get really is 48 mpg and on a long run if I'm being really careful it goes up to about 53 mpg which is truly astonishing. The economy is certainly aided by the gearbox and it's also aided by some of these um, gearbox settings you can have. What, around town I find myself using what's called the Eco Pro mode which um, basically optimises the car's economy even down to the fact that it retunes the air conditioning to make it more economical. It's also got a comfort mode, which I don't use that often, to be perfectly honest, and a sport mode, which sharpens up the steering, sharpens up the throttle response. But in reality, I really just reserve that for B-roads. Most of the time, I'm just an Eco Pro. Other good things about driving it? Well, the driving position is really suits me. I'm, admittedly, I'm not that tall, but taller colleagues of mine also have no complaints. The seats are fantastically well shaped. The steering wheel is very adjustable. One slight issue is, although the seats are very adjustable, they are manual. And I think really, at this level, it's a bit cheeky at BMW not to have some sort of electric adjustment as standard. I've really only got one complaint about the way it drives, and that's the low speed refinement. Around town, when you're just pootling to work or from cold starts, this car is not the most refined in its class. And in fact, I'd go so far as to say, it's actually slightly less refined than the last 320D. I think, I think the, the engineers have had to make a compromise for economy and CO2, and one of the forfeits has been low speed refinement. However, that said, get above town speeds, get it out of town, get it on the motorway, and it really is as refined as anything else in the class. Other things I found really good about this car, I really love the cabin, I love the simplicity of it, the control layout's fantastic. I love the way the optional sat-nav system works, it really is state of the art. Audi and Mercedes obviously have similar systems, but I really like the way the BMWs work. Most of it's controlled through this rotary knob to stand here, and I can scroll through all the radio functions. It tethers to my phone really well. It imports my phone book. I mean, it really is a good office on the move, this car. The sound system's good too, although most of the time, to be fair, I'm listening to the digital radio. One little thing I do use quite a lot, there's an actually an iPhone app um, that BMW have called BMW Connected, and this syncs really well with the sat-nav system. I can uh, be in the office and I can uh, put an address on Google Maps, send a message to the car, and when I get in the car, the sat-nav's ready to go with the address that I need to go to. It's really, a, it's very fantastically simple, but a little thing that I've used all the time, and another thing that adds to the pleasure of owning this car. One other potential downside to this car is the rear space. It's okay for a small rear wheel drive saloon, but it is worth bearing in mind if you have older children or more than one child, it may be limited. Um, and the same applies to the boot too. 
quite a few times I have run out of space in this car and to be perfectly honest, if I had my time again, I may well be thinking about spending a bit more on the 3 Series Touring or the new 3 Series GT, both of which have got bigger, more practical boots than this one. So yes, I have had a couple of niggles with this car, but the essentials are that it's a brilliant small saloon. It's fantastic to drive, it's incredibly cheap to run, 50 mpg, you can't argue with that, and most of all, it's head and shoulders above the equivalent Audi or Mercedes. It's easily the best car in its class, and I've enjoyed every minute of owning it. To read all of my weekly reports on this car, please go to whatcar.com.